test? All right. Hey, there we are. Okay. Well, thanks everybody for hanging out here for this uh, presentation. Um, this one's a little bit different for me. I've done a number of different presentations, but they're all technical, and uh, this one's not. So, um, what I'd like to do is just talk about how I wound up being a penetration tester and a consultant, and. I'm perfectly willing to break out into what I've talked to other people about who are doing different things in security and how maybe they got to where they're at. Um, I'd really like it, you know, if you guys have questions during the presentation, feel free. It's not going to bother me or throw me off. Um, I like interaction and the whole bit. So to be useful for you guys, if, if you have something you want to throw out there, then, then fire away. Um, I'm going to try and keep an eye on some of my email, because uh, if somebody has a question, but they don't want to shout it out because maybe their boss is in the room or something like that, um, I'll try and check my email every so often to see if there are questions there. Um, that way, you're not feeling like uh, you're, you're tipping your hand to something. Um, so what I'm going to be talking about a little bit is my background first. Uh, just kind of how my career went. Um, and it is kind of a a winding path, if you will. Um, some things I've found that helped me uh, move into security. Uh, things I've learned that are, you know, maybe I would do differently or uh, wish I had found sooner, as well as some skills you need to develop if you want to do consulting. And I also want to spend a little bit of time talking about maybe what the consultant life is like, um, because it's, it's definitely been interesting as I've shifted from being a, a full-time employee to, to somebody who's roaming around from job to job. So, where did I start out? I actually started out as a machinist. Um, I was working in a machine shop. I was planning on doing an engineering degree and uh, got married. About a month later, my wife says, um, honey, I'm pregnant. And I looked at my career path for my in the machine shop and when I was going to eventually finish my degree and I thought I need to make some changes like right now. <laughs> and so I started taking some classes in the Microsoft certification. Uh, this is back in NT4 and started taking on computer responsibilities here at the shop. And it was just kind of a way of getting my hands dirty. I was trying to get some kind of experience. Eventually I finally got a, a part-time job working at a company named Homestore.com. Um, which was an interesting experience. I started in 2000, and I was there for when the company declared their profitability uh, based on what they call it, pro forma numbers or whatever, which means I, we, we exclude everything that makes this negative, therefore we're positive. Um, so we were profitable, but we were burning through tons of money every month uh, to the point of this was our CEO. Uh, got to go spend some quality time in prison. And uh, we were all quite thrilled with that uh, because we knew a lot of people that got hurt out of this. But there was a lot of silver linings for me. I started out actually as a network operator. My job was to sit there, uh, stare at a bunch of monitors, and when something turned red, run an IS reset. That didn't work. Let me reboot the server. That didn't work either. Call somebody. And um, that was our job you know, as it was supposed to be. And I kept getting out into other things. And within a couple of months, I, I got pulled in to be full-time, and then they pulled me out to be a systems administrator. And my first project actually was to be a, work on a backup system. Uh, the company had a great DR plan. It was a single server sitting out here running a single DLT drive trying to back up, well, what should have been hundreds of servers and was actually maybe 10. Um, and you guys dealt with backups, you know how much fun this is and whatnot. Uh, it was a crazy environment as to how it was architected. And the thing that I took away from the backups really was how things start communicating, interacting with each other. And I, I list this because it actually was kind of important for me. I started doing a lot of troubleshooting as to what happened when your name resolution was set up wonky with different DNS servers fulfilling different roles in different areas of the company and reverse lookups aren't there that need to be there uh, for the, the backups to actually 
function. Um, what happens when your backup server contacts its client and it looks up the name and gets a different IP and tries to talk back to some other host? Um, things like that. So I, I got to learn a lot of troubleshooting here and started learning networking, which led to me getting into DNS. We had tons and tons of domains. And so I had expressed some interest in the Unix side of the house because uh, when I went into computers, I looked at it and thought, I, I'm not going to be a one-trick pony. I don't want to be just a Microsoft admin. Um, because if anything happens with this, then I'm, I'm out. You know, it has to be, I'd have to be a Microsoft shop no matter what. So I started getting interested in Unix, got pulled in to, be, uh, to manage the domain names that we had. We had maybe 8,000 or so that we were, we were dealing with um, and started learning from there. And I remember being really thrilled. We were going to do this migration from an ISP hosting the DNS servers um, for a bunch of ancillary domains. And we didn't even know what was live or not because the company had gone, grown through buying up other organizations. And the guy who managed it before left the company. Nobody bothered to get the ownership of all these domains or anything like that. And so I wrote this VB script that would go out and look up to the, the, the hosts and see, hey, how does this, uh, you know, is, where's this hosted at? And I could infer off of that whether it's one of our systems or not. And um, was really proud, took it to one of my buddies who was a Unix admin, said, hey, check this out. And he says, and I showed him my script, and he said, you know, I could do that with about three lines of bash. And I cursed him out for a while and started learning more Unix. <laughs> Um, eventually, I ended up being, you know, going into being an infrastructure admin and spending my time with just how things work and uh, not dealing with the application but, but all the behind the scenes stuff, uh, which was interesting because if we screwed up, you know, we didn't take down a site, we took down a bunch of sites. Um, you know, you mess up a, an upgrade on your load balancers and everything goes down all of a sudden. So taught me a lot there about, like I said, about troubleshooting, uh, about how things get set up and how they interact with each other. Went next to another company named InnerThings. This is where I got my taste of really working with closely with developers and, and what they were trying to do to get our sites out the door. I also started doing some database administration and got handed network gear. At home store, everything was totally separated. If I walked too close to the database servers, I got screamed at by the, the director of database administration. Inner thinks I was responsible for it. Um, and because of my experience with the backups, I became the designated troubleshooter there at, at the company. And any weird problem found its way to me. And I started dealing with sensitive information. And I started becoming aware, hey, wait a minute. There's some things that we need to do better here, I think. Um, we were doing fraud detection mortgage applications. So everything that you guys put into, or that I put into my application to buy a home, that's what we had. Um, so I started getting sensitive to that. And um, started trying to change people's mindsets about some things, which was an interesting experience being a sysadmin who was just kind of learning things on his own. Eventually, I went to another place called Edmunds.com. Spend, it gets even more intense dealing with the application. I was on a team called AppOps, which we would probably phrase as DevOps now. Um, I had a team, you know, the guys, we had a couple of sysadmins, we had a couple of developers that we, we worked together to, to troubleshoot um, what was going on the site, roll out new versions of it, whatever. Um, I wouldn't call it DevOps like you see now, but it was, it was kind of that idea though, let's, let's bring these, these teams together. And um, started getting me really exposed to what can go on in the application, what the developers are dealing with, what are they trying to, to get out the door, and what's their understanding of, of what's happening inside of security, um, and how does that affect me. Um, great little story here that, that caught us off guard. Um, their application depended on a ton of mod rewrite rules to actually control the logic and traffic flow through the site. And um, one of these mod rewrite rules was um, uh, 
got a little interesting when we hired a security guy and he was testing out his IDS and he said, well, let me search for, Ed's, you know, just put domain edmunds.com slash Etsy password because he was trying to fire a snort event. And lo and behold, he got Etsy password. And he came over to our team and says, um, I've got a problem. And he showed us and we said, that's definitely an issue. And so we start scrambling, very red faced and embarrassed. Um, it turns out it was one of these mod rewrite rules and we had to, to figure out how we were gonna deal with that and keep the site functioning. Because if we break the rules, we break the site. But neither do we want to have read access to any file that Apache has access to on the system. So that was, that was an interesting time. Um, this was also where I was really, I mean, I was 100% Unix. So I had moved entirely away from Windows and, and was, was diving into that. After a while, I finally, geez, after a while, I finally left and went back to, to Interthinks, largely because when I went to Edmonds, I was commuting 40 miles down into Santa Monica. And uh, yeah, Wade. <laughs> Turns out Wade and I worked actually in the same building. We were neighbors and didn't know it um, at the time. But um, yeah, it was, I didn't see my kids awake is what ended up happening. So it was a really challenging environment. I was learning tons of stuff. But um, you know, hey, I got to have some priorities here. And seeing my kids in a position other than in bed asleep was a good thing. So I went back to Interthinks. And this is where my security career started to start happening. I went from something I was interested in to something I was responsible for. Um, I still came back as a sysadmin, and I was still throwing all the oddball problems. Uh, I got to troubleshoot all kinds of weird things that would happen when you couldn't figure out how or why somebody implemented that the way they did. Uh, and that included diving into code and looking through for logic flaws and things that were going on, um, dealing with DR, right? Um, but I started you know, pushing this time heavily, saying, hey, we've got to do something. When I was at Edmonds, I started looking, <laughs> because of this commute, I started listening to a lot of podcasts, and I started learning a bunch of stuff. Who here has listened to Paul.com? Okay, a bunch of folks in the room, a uh, bunch of folks who haven't. It's a pretty good opportunity to sit and listen to some guys drink a lot of beer and talk a lot of shop and a lot of crap. Um, and I started to learn a bunch from this. And I realized, I said, hey, wait a minute, this isn't that mystical. This whole security thing is not as um, crazy as I was initially thinking this was, where I had to know all this elite knowledge and whatnot to deal with it. Um, so when I came back to Interthinks, I came back with a little bit of a different mindset. And I actually got formally assigned things like doing security monitoring and testing. Um, unfortunately, I also got assigned things like contract reviews and looking through proposals and doing customer due diligence and whatnot, which was an absolute nightmare. Um, and I spent far too much time defending our environment with reams of paper that I might as well have buried our servers in than I did technically uh, monitoring the environment. But it still became a valuable thing, I think, um, later on because you know one of the things that I deal with now is going through and reading all of these documents and reading through different contracts and whatnot that uh, our clients uh, have set up uh, to protect themselves and helping them okay here's some things you got to watch out for so it actually ended up being kind of valuable I think one of the things that really was important out of all of these experiences though was um, well, a couple things. One, I was fortunate enough to be exposed to some really good sysadmins um, who just taught me a ton of stuff. And they gave me a lot of opportunities to go out and do some crazy stuff. Um, I look back on Homestore and I think of some of the projects that I've been assigned and there is no way that I would think a junior sysadmin, you know, back when I was at Homestore originally, should be assigned some of the stuff that I got assigned. Um, a lot of my learning was, well, here's a fire, go and get kicked out into it. Um, 
So what I learned that was valuable out of that? I learned that not knowing how something necessarily worked was not necessarily the end of the world. Um, figuring out how it worked and what was going on and maybe where some things were going sideways was what was important. Um, and I think that is a huge mindset that uh, is critical for somebody who's doing security. Whatever you're doing in security. Because you get tossed all kinds, you just never know what you're going to run into. As a pen tester, right, this week I'm doing an architecture review, which is what we call it, where we sit down and talk to them about what they're doing and their policies and all this other stuff. And it's a paper chase, right? Next week I'm pen testing a Java web application. Then I'm doing a mobile pen test. Then we're doing a physical pen test over here. Um, and we've even done some hardware pen testing. Followed up with network or whatever. I and mean, it's, it's all over the place. And there have been plenty of times that I get assigned something. And they ask me, well, have you ever worked with that before? Nope. Guess I can't say that after this, you know, next week. Um, but because of that experience of learning how things work, and to be honest with you, you start finding, and I'm sure you guys have all seen this, you start working on something, oh, well, this is like this over here with a twist, right? Okay, that makes sense to me. And here are the pitfalls we had over here. Let me look and see if we've got the same issues going on. Um, so to me, that's, that's probably one of my number one things that I look at and think is a valuable asset that I have that I picked up along this process of becoming a security consultant, getting into security full time. Um, but you know, there were still some things that I saw that I, I wanted to do better. Um, and uh, it took a little bit of an interesting turn. Uh, first, when we, um, it was my next position, uh, actually, I saw people I had met by this time who were doing all kinds of stuff. They were getting up here like this in front of a crowd or teaching classes or whatever. And I was sitting there thinking, man, I can't do that. I've never done anything like that before in my life. And um, I decided, well, I kind of want to go down this path, so I guess I need to, to pick up some new skills. And um, that was where I ended up at Tenable. Uh, I went to Tenable Network Security to be a trainer, which was a shocking experience, to say the least. Because I had gone from an environment where I pretty much had the keys to everything in the organization, right? to now I had no access except to a couple of boxes that were our playground. Um, but there were some benefits to it. You know, I started learning how to build courses and, and train, I, you know, teach classes, spend two days or four days talking to a group of people and answering questions. Um, it was frightening as can be when I started out. And then it started getting more comfortable. Uh, I also started doing things with our labs. I became responsible for building on our lab environments, which has been pretty cool. You set up a live environment, things are actually happening in it, uh, and do it in a way that I could turn around and hand you an entire network with a set of tools and say, okay, here's our objectives and the whole bit, and everybody gets their own environments that look the same, and we turn loose and uh, start teaching a bunch of people, in that case, about Nessus and Tenable Security Center and things like that. Um, and one thing I skipped over, uh, I realized along the way that some, some things that happened in my personal life. Um, first off, I wrote a, and this is something that I also think is really critical, and we'll talk about it here in a bit. I wrote a little script called Reconnoiter. Reconnoiter is an embarrassing, stupid little script in some ways because it got a lot of attention, and I didn't expect it. Um, but all it is, um, I got into a, an argument with my developers at Interthinks. I said, hey, we need to protect this database system out here. And it's internal in the whole bit, but we're not doing anything here. And they said, no, it's internal, it's fine, we don't need to worry about it. It's got, you know, it requires a password and username to get into, so we're good to go. And um, so I start buying up. We're going to do a little exercise in here, and I'm going to attack the internal database system. 
Well, I'm the sysadmin. I already know all the usernames. And the last thing I wanted to hear was development and uh, biz development, the business guys and stuff like that come back and say, hey, I know you did that, but it doesn't matter because you're the sysadmin. You cheated. You obviously went on and got all the usernames uh, from somewhere else. Fine, where can I get usernames? I thought about it for a little bit. I was like, well, LinkedIn's popular. Who here has a LinkedIn profile? Yep. Who here lists all their employers that they've worked at as they're detailing their, their background and the whole bit in their career? So um, I found out with some messing around if I do site colon LinkedIn.com, so I restrict my search results just to LinkedIn, in URL PUB, because every public profile has PUB in the URL, and then the company name, I get the names of all the people who work there. Now I just build my regex to scrape out their names and then munge them into possible usernames and passwords. And I sent this stupid script out to the Paul.com mailing list because that was what I knew about at the time really and said, hey, is this useful to anybody? I mean, it seems kind of cool for what I'm doing. And it started getting attention. <laughs> and I was like, holy crap, this is not what I expected. Um, and uh, turned around, I actually ended up meeting some other folks because of that. Uh, Kevin Johnson, I work for a company named Secure Ideas. Uh, Kevin Johnson, who some of you may have heard of, he wrote a lot of courses for SANS and the web app pen testing uh, curriculum. Um, somebody sent this over to Kevin and in a class, and he said, well, yeah, of course you would do. I don't have a tool that does that. So I get an email from Kevin saying, hey, do you, would you mind if I put Reconnoiter in Samurai WTF and in the SANS class? Yes, please go <laughs> have a good time. Um, ended up meeting Kevin later um, at, a, at a DEF CON. I uh, just got my first experience going to Black Hat and I decided, well, you know what, I'm gonna hang out a little bit longer uh, because they give me a free pass to DEF CON uh, back in DEF CON 17, I think. So I'm going to go that, to that. And uh, that was actually where I met Kevin Johnson, which is about, and a number of other guys uh, who work in security. And um, spent the time hanging out with them and found out, hey, these are real people. They're not stuck up rock stars that, you know, oh my gosh, you know, it's, in fact, if you want to really kill Kevin sometime, make a big fuss over the fact that he's Kevin Johnson or whatever. And, Watch him cringe, because um, he doesn't see it, <laughs> that he's anything special. Um, but he's a smart guy, right? And that was what the opportunity there was, is the chance to hang out and meet with some, some smart people. That's what I think conferences like this are great for, for developing our careers. Um, we were hanging out here in the front, and I was talking to Rob, and, and um, it was brought up, hey, is this the, the hallway con? Well, well, yes, it is, and this is a great opportunity for us to hang out and, and chat and get to know some people better, right? Um, so I think that is also a really critical piece in my career and a lot of other people's careers in how they got into security. Um, when, uh, in fact, mentioning Kevin, um, he, uh, his first, how did he get involved in all this stuff? He decided to fork a project named Base, or Asset at the time, and, and create Base. It's a web front end for Snort, right? And Kevin will tell you it's a terrible application, and it's, got, it's riddled with vulnerabilities. In fact, they used it for quite a while as one of their vulnerable apps for the web app pen testing course. And he likes to say it was a way of showing how not to write your code. Um, but he got involved because he t attended a SANS class he was doing the network analysis. And the teacher of the class realized he had the guy who wrote BASE out here and says, hey, Kevin, would you mind teaching BASE to the class? Oh, yeah, that'd be great. Um, he gets up there and, and does, you know, teaches this whole you know, morning or something like that on BASE, realized later that Mike got paid for him to do that <laughs> <laughs> and that he'd been suckered. But because of that, and because he spent some time 
building, you know, building out this piece of software, right? He started meeting people. And he ended up working for Mike, uh, Mike Poor was the guy who, who was teaching the class. He ended up working for him later at being Guardians. So that's something that, uh, that I think is, uh, is critical and is meet people, right? Is critical to our careers. Um, I look at myself and think, I don't know that I'm really what somebody would look at as a rock star in technology. All right, I'm pretty good. I'm a good sysadmin. Uh, I'm a pretty good pen, pen tester. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of stuff. You could fill libraries with stuff I don't know yet, right? And I'm sure as we went through here in the room, everybody else could tell a similar story. Uh, over here, I am really good. You know, I, kn I know my stuff over here. I'm good at this. But, man, I, I can beat up Unix servers all day, but if you threw me into an active directory environment, I'm going to be lost for a while. Um, or, and if you haven't helped me, you haven't helped you if you assign me to write an application, right? Um, but it's through meeting people that I think the ability to move around in our careers is important, it is, and it is critical to get to where we want to be. Why did Kevin hire me? Because we'd known each other for about four years at that point. He was running his own business and he needed somebody. So I got a phone call one day when I'm at Tenable and says, hey, um, it's kind of odd and out of the blue, but do you want a job? And that was how I started at Secure Ideas. Um, how did I get into security at Interthinks when I was there? I started asking, can I do this? Can I take this on? And it's not like it would, uh, my responsibilities as a systems administrator went away, to be honest with you. This was just more that I had to do. And eventually some of that started falling off, but um, you know, it was putting myself out there. Um, one of the things I think, I've mentioned this a couple of times, there are things that, you know, the training, getting up here and talking and stuff, it's uncomfortable. Changing what we're doing is uncomfortable. I'm not great about going out to um, conferences like this and seeing people in the hallway and say, hey, how are you? I'm Jason, right? I'll be the guy who's standing over here really quiet. Um, but, you know, hey, that's where a lot of these opportunities come from. There's individuals here in this room who I know, who I've got to meet because I showed up at an ISSA lunch. Uh, last year we did our first attempt at B-side Salt Lake City, right? Uh, so I got to meet, uh, got to meet Sean. Uh, Wade Billings over here in the back, I met because how the heck did we connect? No, I didn't. They didn't, they didn't call me back. <laughs> the HR person disappeared. <laughs> okay. But I met Wade when I moved up here to Utah from Los Angeles, through some means, right? And Wade was up here, and so we started hanging out and talking. Through Wade, I met Chris Henderson, because I was speaking at Utah Open Source Conference, and Wade said, hey, you ought to go listen to this. I met Danny because I was hanging out at uh, DC801 down at the, the, uh, the building up in Salt Lake City, right, among some other things. All of this stuff is really important to me in my career, all right? Uh, I met Kevin because I went down to DEF CON. So if there's anything that I would look at and tell, that I tell everybody when we talk about how do I get into security, get out of your comfort zone, take on new responsibilities, and meet people. And meet people <laughs> a lot. <laughs> um, the other thing that I would tell you, and for me was critical, that stupid script, freaking away. <coughs> but I produced something, right? And I th threw it out there thinking it wasn't a big deal and took some criticism from some folks because you did something, so I've got to complain at you because that's the way this works, right? Um, but because I did something and something got thrown out there and we could tinker with it and get our hands into it and the whole bit, um, people out in other places in the world, to be honest with you, started forming an opinion about Jason Wood, 
who they had never met, never heard of, until that point. Um, so if you have something that you've got, you, you know, a little tool you've created to do something, and it's kind of handy, you got an idea, throw it out there. I mean, it's, it's amazing. I told you what Reconnoiter did. This is not a complex app, and there are better tools for it now. Um, but you know, I think that, is, that also is a huge deal for building your credibility. And hey, yeah, this guy knows something about doing stuff in security. Well, how do you know that? Well, here's some tools he's built, right? Um, what else? Oh, social media. That job and that I got at Tenable. Um, Ron Gula, CEO of Tenable, says, hey, we're building out our on-demand training and we need somebody to test this out. So we're looking for some beta testers. And so I reply back over Twitter. I would love to do that because I use Nessus and this is a chance to get free training and I can't get squat for training where I'm at, so this is a win. <laughs> um, so I did it. Was I got a direct message back from Ron saying, "Okay, here, send your information over here, and we'll get you hooked up." And so I did, and I took the training, and I gave him a lot of feedback. Right? Um, I did work pretty hard on that. I figured if you're going to give me a free class, I probably ought to give some feedback. And um, I sent it all in. Sent a quick message off to, to Ron over Twitter and said, direct message, said, hey, thank you very much. It was really appreciate you letting me do this. I learned a lot. And he replies back, says, yeah, I saw that. Want to do training? You interested in that? And that started a conversation. Next thing I know, I'm flying out to Maryland for an interview and got hired at, at, uh, at Tenable. So things like social media, Twitter and the whole bit, you know, that helps build some of our, uh, our, our presence. You know, people know who we are that way. They interact with us and we talk back and forth. Uh, I've joked around, in fact, some of you guys have probably done this as well, talking with your wife or whatever and you're talking about some friend you have out there who you've never met in real life, but you talk so much in IRC with them that they might as well be. And these are people that you contact and say, hey, I got this weird problem. I'm seeing this, this, and this. Anybody ever mess with this before, run into this? And somebody says, yeah, have you looked at this? Oh, thanks, right? So anyhow, just that process there is, is actually really valuable. You know, that, that ability to, to, to bump into and to meet with people that we, we don't, we're not around. We also have things locally, right? Eastside Salt Lake City, Utah SEC, there's a local ISSA chapter. We got DC 801. We've got things going on here in our backyards, right? Get involved with those, volunteer. Um, Open West Conference is coming up. Proposed to speak there. It was my first time speaking at a technical conference, right? Uh, so you know th those are all opportunities to 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 learn, and as well as to to share and build your credibility, and find out hey you know we have a need and you talked about that. Let's see if you know what have you got here for us. Another thing I want to mention as well is the the idea of giving back to other people. I'm sure you guys have had this happen already to you. You talk about what you're doing, you're running into somebody, and they say, well, how did you do that? How does that work? Well, I want to learn about that a little bit. And you're, you're kind of mentoring somebody there at the office, right? Um, I got involved with uh, Cyber Patriot, which is a, a name I cringe at. <laughs> but uh, it's a great program. The Air Force sponsors it. You've got college, high school, and middle school teams learning how to defend configure uh, systems so that they're secure, remove back doors from them and stuff like that. And this is their first experience with security. And it takes up a lot of time. I meet with my team Tuesdays and Thursdays. And there's three, three of us. I'm just one of the mentors, not, not even the coach. But 
Um, there's three of us that meet with, with our team and for, for two hours or so, so four hours a week that we're with these kids. And you know what? It's a lot of fun. And we're growing up kids here in the, you know, in, in my case at Clearfield High uh, up uh, in Davis County, right? So they can do this in their careers. I don't care if they do pen testing. Pen testing isn't necessarily the end all be all. Uh, in fact, if I'm thinking about myself and how do I see myself in technology, I'm still a sysadmin. Um, I do pen testing. I do security consulting. And I think I do a pretty good job. But I'm a sysadmin. And those are my roots. And the ability to turn around and share that back with somebody else and help them come along and figure out what works for them is a lot of fun. And you know what, to be honest with you, it gets us a little recharging too. Um, you hit points in your career where you're just bored. I've been doing this for a while. It hasn't changed very much. I feel like I'm solving the same freaking problem today that I solved last month and I'm teaching it to the same guy who refuses to learn how this works. Um, and then I get out in front of a bunch of 15 to 18 year olds who are hopped up and excited. That really helps. And it's really cool when you do something like that and your team heads to nationals in DC next week. <laughs> they, uh, they did good this year. Really? What's that? Okay, you're at Northridge? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, we were watching you guys the last competition to see where they were at. And, and uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Um, and this is something you guys can get started in your area. Now, Northridge and Clearfield, it's a JROTC program. It doesn't have to be an ROTC team to get involved in some of this stuff. And there are other competitions out there as well that you could get involved with and build up teams around. MITRE does a competition that's more on the pen testing side of things. There are forensics challenges, right? And to be honest with you, I've had a ton of times where it's like, yeah, I've worked with that. I don't remember the details of it, and I've got to teach it to a group of people. Well, let me go brush up. So I learn it better, because I've got to learn it well enough to teach it to somebody else, right? Um, some skills, if you're going to do, I think that help with well, really anything with career. I don't care what your career really is. But some independence, some ability to, you know, hey, I've looked it over, I've thought about it, I think this is what I need to do. Um, and as I always tell people, that's good. Now leave yourself a way back, <laughs> right? Um, but, you know, that, that confidence to go out and try something new, uh, to get out there away from my assigned little space that I'm safe in here at the office. Uh, people skills are really important, particularly if you get into consulting. Um, and I'm, it's something that gets really odd when you're out in an engagement and you're sitting here with their security engineers or analysts or whatever. We're talking shop and we're having a, bl a blast, right? And we're down in the weeds and we're even talking a little bit of trash about maybe some of the, somebody that developed this particular piece of software that is uh, allowing us through so easily or, or what have you. And then they come, one of the guys comes walking and says, hey, the CIO wants to talk to you. Okay, time to adjust my point of view and what I'm going to say, right? I mean, I'm going to deliver the same message, but I'm going to deliver this very differently because I'm talking to somebody else now. Um, and, you know, sometimes you're in there with the CIO and they're, they're right there wanting to do it. It's a smaller organization or whatever, but I've actually <laughs> sat there in a large university and, you know, talking to, to some of their managers, they don't care about any of that stuff, you know, the, the technical details. So we have to adjust and be able to phrase things in a way that communicates what they're dealing with and do it in a way that doesn't absolutely piss them off. Because walking in and saying, man, that sucks, isn't going to fly really well. Now, it may really suck, right? <laughs> you may be looking at it going, what were they smoking when they did this? But you can't say that. Um, 
So those people skills are, are just absolutely critical. Um, and again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring up troubleshooting, and when I say troubleshooting, it's that following something or, you know, some indication of an issue and tracing it back to where the problem is or what can happen with it. When I do pen testing, and I've taught some classes on this, uh, where, I, or, where this has happened, and I'm beating up a web app in here, and oh, let me try this attack. Oh, that didn't work. What happened? Uh, all right, let me adjust my attack to do this. Let me adjust it again. When I'm doing a pen test, it's fail, 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 and eliminating things that, okay, that doesn't work, so that eliminates this host issues over here or potential items, and you follow that down, right, until you get to, okay, here's the vulnerability, here's the payload that works, and now I can start dumping data out of that database system. Or now I can deploy malicious code through your web app or whatever it is that I'm doing, right? Um, so that process of thinking through problems or thinking through a function in an application or a, a network or something like that, I think is, is an, something we want to develop um, and get better at. Um, things that help. Lessons learned. Um, Pick an area that's fun and interesting and play in it. Whatever it is, but do something with it. And then you start coming up with ideas for tools um, that you could produce and release. Why did I think of writing a screen scraper written in Python to pull out names from LinkedIn <coughs> via Google? Honestly, I did it because I was playing a video game named Dark Age of Camelot. I don't know if anybody ever played that. They had player housing in there, and getting hold of a lot was really hard. So I wrote a Perl scraper that would query for my server for available lots and then send me an email when one showed up. I would try and get in and race over there to go pick it up. It's silly, kind of stupid, but when it came time to write Reconnoiter, writing a screen scraper seemed pretty natural. And I picked Python because, well, I really don't know Python. So what the hell, let's give it a shot, right? Um, and then I wrote a, turned around and I implemented it in Metasploit because, well, I don't really know Ruby either. So let me try that. And I learned how to do that. Um, so it's that process, right, where you're, just, you're kind of interested. You just keep poking at it and figuring it out. Learning new things, learning is critical um, to what's going on. And I'm sure you guys, it's the same when, if you're in technology, learning is critical, period. Um, so security is the same deal. So a lot of curiosity. Now one thing that I, I do like to mention to folks, because I get, and I ask the questions, right? Um, Chris Henderson and I were sitting down at lunch one time and, we were talking about Vside Salt Lake City, and, and Chris says, hey, you know what? I'd really love it if you came and you spoke about how the heck did you become a security guy? How did you become a, con a, a pen tester and a consultant? Which is why, how I ended up here, right? I submitted that and it, it made the cut. Um, well, I've sat in Chris's seat looking across at somebody else, um, friends who are doing that. How did you do that? And some things that uh, are interesting. If you go out and you be a consultant, um, one, you bounce around from thing to thing to thing to thing to thing. And um, sometimes it gets really aggravating as you are trying to learn new systems. And you know, the customer's got this problem. And what do you know about, um, well, this is a job I just did, recently did. What do you know about Splunk? And are you you know, can you help us set it up? Yes, I can help you set it up. Yes, I know a bit about Splunk. No, I'm not a Splunk master, right? But they had nothing so I could get started with them and get something going for them, right? Um, the other part that wasn't as difficult, um, you have to travel a fair bit. Now, I don't travel a ridiculous amount, but consulting's travel. And you go to some really nice places. Uh, Rob and I were talking about it out here outside. I spent a week down in San Diego, a hotel that sat right on the bay. 
It was across the street. The only time I saw that bay, really, was sitting at breakfast in the, the restaurant downstairs and when I came back that night from the client site. So you travel. Your wife calls you up and says, you know, something or other broke on the house or the car broke down and you're sitting here a thousand miles away going, sorry, we can't help. Your kids have their first performance. Uh, this happened with my son, my, his first uh, orchestra performance. And I don't even know where I was, somewhere back east. Um, so things like that are hard. You need to, be, need to be prepared about it. You need to ask some questions. If you start looking at doing consulting, uh, you need to talk to whoever you're, you know, maybe you're interviewing with about what does that mean, right? And then talk about whoever, you know, with whoever's in your life about what does that mean for us. Um, and the other thing that I wanted to, you know, you, you look at, and, oh man, it's so cool. We do pen testing, we hack stuff, and you spend a week and you tear this place apart and you have a ton of fun. And you get back to your office with all of your notes and your data you've captured and your screenshots, and you go, oh, crap, I got to write a report on this. And it's got to be meaningful. It's got to be something that they, is useful to my client so that they can fix things and improve their security. Because I don't get paid to hack stuff. I get paid to tell them how to fix problems they have, right? So, uh, you know, I think my record for a report that I wrote of findings and not appendix of dump from tools and stuff like that was 70 pages. Um, which was a miserable, awful week. But, you know, hey, it's part of the deal, and I had fun two weeks before that, so you just kind of have to, to deal with it. Um, what else? There was something else I was going to mention around that. Oh, the other thing that I think was really important for me, and it's important for a lot of us at, at, at Secure Ideas, you know, the team we've tried to put together. Uh, our job is to tell people how to make their environment better. That means we have to know how to run an environment or build an application. A couple of the guys I work with have never systemed admin to server at all ever in their lives. But they wrote a whole heck of a lot of code in .NET or Java. So when it comes time to tell them how to securely write a Java web application or .NET app or whatever it is, we put those guys on it, right? Because they've got all of this knowledge and experience of learning lessons the hard way, um, of trying to deal with deadlines and milestones and all that other stuff. And so, you know, our work experience, you know, is absolutely one of the most critical things in, our, in, in, in trying to get into security, right? If that's what you're interested in. I played it down a little bit. I used, used to look at it and say, well, you know what? I'm just a sysadmin, right? Um, sure, I bounced around a little bit from Unix to Windows and back and then back again or, or whatever it is. But, um, you know, now that I'm doing pen testing and I've actually got to sit here and talk through my clients, with my clients through problems that they're having in the whole bit, man, that experience is freaking golden, right? It helps when you're able to sit there and talk to them and the client's feeling beat up and, and say, yeah, I know. I've sat there in your position. It's, this sucks. And I'm going to say this, this, and this because these are things that need to be taken care of, but let's talk about what you need to do uh, first, right? Um, check my email real quick, see if there were. Nope. Okay, no questions via email. Um, so that's, you know, that was kind of my path and how I got to, to security. Um, what question, uh, do you guys have any questions? Okay. I do have a computer science degree. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, yeah. That, and, and certifications play into that, that, that question as well. What certifications help me do this? What certification is... Yeah, so I... When I graduated with, yeah, so when I'm interviewing, interviewing somebody, whether I was a sysadmin or a security guy, right, what do I care about? Can you do the job? Can you figure this out? Who here has worked with somebody with a PhD or a master's degree and thought, what a freaking idiot? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I graduated with my CS degree after I had seven years of work experience as a sysadmin. I was going to school full time and I was working full time. Uh, and it was brutal. And I tell my kids, go get your degree, get it when you're young, when you can have fun while you're getting your degree, and don't wait until you've got two kids and a wife and you know bills and all that other stuff, right? Uh, it helps. It absolutely can be important when you have a job that somebody wants and they say, do you have a CS degree? Because if you don't, we don't want to talk to you. Do you have a CISSP or some kind of comparable certification? If not, I don't want to talk to you. Government work, it gets really important. A lot of our clients who are developing new applications or whatever, they're in startups, they're startups or whatever, they don't care. What they want to know is, can You'd help me fix problems that I have. <coughs> and particularly when I start demonstrating things like tools we've written and you know, Samurai, or Samurai WTF and Mobisec and a bunch of other tools. These are things that Secure Idea spends time on to produce. Why? It builds our credibility. So that's less of a problem. No. I don't know that it's not possible. I just don't know anybody. Now, let, yeah, there you go. One of the things that I've seen is a lot of your big companies will hire in-house pen testers to do application and network level pen testing without any kind of meaning from one guy to another. Yeah. Absolutely. You get into some of these organizations that they, they, they build teams around this stuff. And maybe you look at it out there and you're like, you know, I don't care about pen testing. I don't care about pen testing at all. What I like is incident response or forensics or whatever. I'm a developer who's just concerned about security of my app, right? Um, there are organizations that that's what they do and they hire these people to stay here and work and do that. Um, at the same time, travel. You know, I'm running maybe 25% travel most of the time, do a lot of remote work. A lot of our pen tests are done remotely. Uh, we've got a gig coming up that's in Australia, and nobody's flying to Australia. So the Internet's making the world a fairly small place. Um, there are some things that you just got to fly. It depends on the problem. And, and that's a crummy answer, but I mean, that's really what it is. I mean, it just depends. There's some things it's like, I can get really specific. Um, do, you have a service? do we have a premium service? <laughs> no, we don't have a premium service. What we do, but you know, at least what we do, right? Uh, somebody asks us for some help. We, you know, we've, we've given them the report and they say, okay, Got some questions about that. Let me talk shop. Okay, let's talk. And we'll talk about the specifics. It's really hard to write that up in a report, particularly since as a pen tester, I've got about that much insight into your application and what's going on and what's happening behind it. I can't tell you step by step how to fix this vulnerability in this web application out here because honestly, I don't necessarily know everything that went into that. But when we sit down and we start talking about it, now we can start getting specific. Um, so that, I think, is where we try and help with that. In our reports, we try to really put enough information in there so they can reproduce it. So when they think they've got a fix, they can retest it themselves and they're not calling us out to look at it and say, nope, still broke. Right? Um, 
What's that? Burp Suite. Burp Suite. Um, because we do a lot of web app pen testing. So for us, it's Burp Suite, Burp Suite, Burp Suite. I mean, it's, there are so many tools built into here. And, and I know some guys who love Zap, Zat Attack Proxy. They're comfortable with that tool. I'm more comfortable. Use the tool you're comfortable with, right? Because you do better that way. The, the tester is the important part, not the tool. Uh, and quite frankly, I mean, some of these tools, yeah, they can go out and scan a bunch of stuff, but you know, they can't tell you that, hey, if I put negative items in here, this cart goes negative, and I get a $4 million refund, <laughs> which we found one time. <laughs> Actually, it had to be $3,999,999 because $4 million was just too much. <laughs> um, anyhow, yeah, uh, Burp Suite, uh, Mobisec has a bunch of tools built into it. Samurai is one that I recognize, recommend to anybody. Kali, we use Kali all the time. Uh, Metasploit, uh, we just did a war dial last night, so we're using Warvox. You know, going kind of old school and call 5,000 phone numbers real fast. Right, so, yeah, so this gentleman's comment was, you know, hey, rap, they had a pen test by Rapid7. The guy said, hey, use the tools that you get the results with. You only have a certain amount of time to test this environment, right? Or whatever it is you're doing. Even if you're internal and you're working there all the time, you only got a certain amount of time to test this environment before they scream at you and tell you to go back to fixing broken stuff, right? Um, so use the tools that are going to get you the results you want that are going to get you the most results. Um, I, you know, I know some guys that love doing some of this stuff with, with tools I wouldn't bother with. But they're comfortable with it, and they work with it, and they get great work going out of it, you know, great results coming out the other end. OK. Go and do. Any other questions? All right, well, thank you very much, everybody, for hanging out and listening to me talk <laughs> for, for this. I've got a couple email addresses up here. If you have any questions, feel free to drop me a line. Uh, like we were talking about just a minute ago, we like to talk shop. So uh, you guys call us up and say, or give me an email and say, hey, I want to talk about this. I like to talk. So feel, please feel free. Thanks. <laughs>